All right, hi guys. Um, welcome to our lesson. Testing one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, so first of all, I want to apologize. Stop the music, Shaza. So first of all, I want to apologize for not uploading anything last week, week four. Uh, first, I have your books. Remember, I have all your books and I was trying to figure out how to teach you guys when I have all your books. Okay, if you have your book, then something is wrong because I have your books since I was recording scores from your book. Okay, so I was trying to figure out um, how to go about that. And then also I had to change how I'm going to give you your scores now that we are doing online lessons in the meantime. So I had to also work on that. Um, just a few announcements. We are going to follow our everyday timetable, our day-to-day -day schedule, which means this week, week five, I will only teach four slash six in real time. Uh, our Zoom meetings or Google meetings will be for 30 minutes tops. We'll keep it nice and short. And then I will switch over to Google Classroom. I'm still trying to decide, am I gonna use Zoom or Google meetings? I'll see, I'll see. And then I will pre-record how to do homework. So from next week, the pre-recordings will just be about um, homework. I'll explain how to do homework and we'll go over it and you use that to help you do your homework, okay? So use Google Classroom for your homework and to see the homework video guideline. But for this week, I will record a full lesson because I did not see four slash one last week and I will not teach four slash one this week. I teach four slash one on Thursdays and Fridays, but because last week we started the online lessons, it means it meant that I could not teach my four slash one. I was still trying to figure out how to teach you guys, okay? Because you don't have the books and I'll need to see how to get scores from you. So I did not see four slash one last week, but I saw four slash six once. And then this week, I will not teach four slash one. This pre-recording is a full lesson. So again, my apologies to four slash six, because a lot of the things that are in this pre-recording are the things we're gonna do in our actual real-time lesson, okay? But it's just this week. From next week, the pre-recordings will be 10, 15 minutes, and I will just be explaining your homework, how to do it, and um, the name of the documents, etc, etc. Now, don't forget, all right, yes, you've been told a thousand times, but it will not hurt to be told a thousand and one times. Please make sure you wear your masks when you go out, try to sanitize, every other hour or every other 20, 30 minutes, try to sanitize, walk around with your own little bottle of sanitizer if you can. And of course, practice social distance, okay? Because I want to see all of your beautiful and handsome faces when we open, <laughs> all right? Just a few announcements before we continue. Last week, when we were having our face-to-face -face classes, I had a test with four slash six. So four slash six, you are safe. Four slash one, we did not have our test. So let's see if next week we'll have classes from the 7th of January. If we have classes on 7 January, which is a Thursday for, yeah, which is a Thursday. Four slash one, I'll give you your test next week on Thursday, 7 January. But life happens. If we have to continue doing online lessons, then four slash one, I'll give you 24 hours to do your test. I think it's very difficult to do the test using real time. So for the test, if we're doing online, four slash one, I'll give you 24 hours to do it. I'll probably create a different link so that it expires and you don't get access afterwards, okay? I'll see, we'll see, we'll see, okay? This week is week five and I will make this pre-recording, just one pre-recording 
PowerPoint and one pre-recording lesson, and we'll have a reflective journal for Unit 8. By reflective journal, I mean that I have your books, right? So I will go over uh, the pages we're supposed to do today. And we'll go over the answers. I'll explain why it's the answer. Afterwards, I will tell you what you have to write down, which means right now, please may you get paper or a notebook and your pen, no pencil, because with a pencil, I will not be able to see the work when you take a picture. So please get your notebook or paper and a pen. As we go over the lesson, and I give you the answers, I will ask you, please copy everything from exercise three, and then you copy everything. This is why I have to pre-record this one, so that you can pause and copy everything. You're going to copy five exercises, but they're going to be easy because we're going to do the work together. All you have to do is copy after we're done. That's how I'll know that you actually watched the lesson. So we're going to do an, a lot of exercises, but I'll only ask you to copy five of them. So you just copy them in your notebook or on paper. Please use a pen because with a pencil, I will not see what you write when you take a picture and upload. So five exercises later, please can you take photos of your work? And then you could type. If you want, you can type, but I think that's too much labor, okay? Just, just write it. I'll show you my example. Please write it and do not screenshot my work. It doesn't work like that. And then you get five points for this, okay? So let's start. Please make sure you now have your paper or notebook and your pen. All right. Are we good to go? All right. Let's do this. Oh. <laughs> All right. So every PowerPoint slide that has this journal it means I need you to copy everything and I will still say it, all right? All right, now we can start. Let's start. Oh my God, no, not yet. So I have changed um, a few things regarding your 50 points. When we started the term, I said we'll do two tests, a video summary, workbook, worksheets. That's why I have your books, three points, and pop quiz, essay, and group presentation. But obviously, this has to change a little bit. For now, this is what we're doing for now. We have two tests, four slash six, you are done with one test. Ka -ching! We did our video summaries. Remember the video summaries we did about, um, what's the girl's name? Devin, the girl with Down syndrome. And we're learning about the vocabulary that we should use when we are talking about people with Down syndrome and we had the interview, that's five points. And then I changed this. I have your workbook worksheets, two points, done. So one test, done. Video summaries, done. Workbook worksheets, done. Next week, which is week six, I will give you guys a pop quiz. That will be three points. So we'll be done with this 10-point section. This week, week five, we're going to do our reflective journal on unit eight, five points. So that means afterwards we'll be left with one test, one pop quiz, and group presentation. But I feel, I feel that I might have to change this depending on um, our online lesson situation. Are we going to meet in person? What's going to happen? So we're quite on track because today, well, this week we'll do reflective journal. We're done with one test. Video summaries, tick. Workbook, worksheets, tick. Next week, pop quiz, tick. Reflective journal, tick. So we'll have the test and presentations. But I'm a bit worried about the presentations. I think we might, we'll see, we'll see. If we have to change, I'll change this and it will become a speaking exercise and you record yourself. But again, let's see in the future, okay? All right, so we did this page, page 46 and page 47. We started unit eight, which is titled Going Away. We did our vocabulary where we matched the photos to the vocabulary. We read our passage on Tokyo, which is in Japan, and we did the comprehension, and we also had a discussion, right? So done, tick. Now, we are going to do page 48 and 49, which is based on grammar and vocabulary. So let's start, page 48, grammar. We're gonna do future tense. 
We use the future tense when we talk about events that will happen at a later time. So for our future tense exercise, we're going to focus on uh, using be going to and present continuous. Remember, present continuous is verb plus ing. But now we also have be going to. So we'll read these sentences first. And then for my four slash one, Kupa, you're going to answer me tomorrow, okay? So I'll read the sentences first, and then I'll explain something. And Pupa will explain the same thing in class, okay? So number one, all of this is future tense, using verbs to talk about events that will happen at a later time. Number one, we're going to look around the shops. Number two, we're leaving on Saturday. Three, be prepared. You're going to see a lot of people wearing cosplay clothing. All right, Pupa, number one. So this is future tense and we're using present continuous, right? So why is it here we have, we're going to look around. Why is it not, we're going to looking around? Why is that? We're using present continuous for future. So why is it we're going to look, not we're going to looking? Pupa, you're gonna answer me tomorrow, please? Oh, shame, the class is in the morning. So maybe you just have to guess. <laughs> All right, so I will explain it. Let's go back to last term when we did past tense and we did the auxiliary verb did. For example, we said, I did study instead of I did studied. Why? Because did is the auxiliary verb for past tense. So auxiliary verb is like an automatic verb, which lets you know the tense. So same thing with number one. We say, we're going to look around instead of we're going to looking around. We say we're going to look around because going to is an auxiliary verb for future tense. Again, auxiliary verb, it's like an automatic verb which tells you if it's past tense or future tense that's why number one it's we're going to look around not we're going to looked around not we're going to looking around we're going to look around if you have an auxiliary verb remember the rule if you have an auxiliary verb past tense or future tense it means that the next verb should not be conjugated okay another example we're going to eat, we're going to study. So auxiliary verb is the automatic verb that tells you if it's past tense or future tense. Therefore, the next verb should not be conjugated. Don't do anything to the next verb. Again, example, you're going to see. It's not, you're going to so, you're going to seeing. That's wrong because you have your auxiliary verb. So now, Oh, the tests are going to be nice when we come back to school because now you guys uh, have studied your past tense auxiliary verb. This is just one of them. Did. I did study. And now we're doing our future tense auxiliary verb. Going to. Going to study. Okay. So when you have an auxiliary verb, it means you do not do anything to the next verb. Okay. We got it. So that means number two, it's only continuous because we don't have an auxiliary verb so verb ing all right so let's do a b and c i will give you guys the answers and i will just read if you are not sure of what i just said message me okay so number one dash to talk about future plans and arrangements usually with a specific time reference so we're going to use this we're going to get our answer by looking at our examples talking about the next week or the next month, we say present continuous. Number two, dash for things we intend to do sometime in the future, sometimes with a non-specific time reference. One day, sometime. So I'm gonna have to go for, be going to. So that's future tense and it's an auxiliary verb. So that means C, dash when we predict things that we know are likely. Likely means maybe it will happen, like high chance it will happen. That's likely, most likely. It means there's a good chance it will happen, okay? So C, I'm gonna have to go for B, going to, okay? All right, next one. Exercise two, where's my textbook? Because I also need to look at my textbook as we do this. Now for this exercise, we need to complete the conversation with the correct form of be going to and the verbs in brackets. So in other words, all we have to do is use the verb be going to. Remember, be going to is an auxiliary verb, which means 
you already know that it's past tense or future tense. Therefore, the next verb should not be conjugated. Do not do anything to the next verb, which means number one, we're going to fly. This is so easy. Number two, you're going to have. Remember, you have, you're going to, auxiliary verb. So do not do anything to the next verb. You cannot say, we're going to flying. No, going to is your auxiliary verb. So do not conjugate the next one. So this is quite simple, right? So let's do this. Number three, what are you going to do? Number four, visit. So we are going to visit. Number five, go. We're going to go. Number six, not walk. That's in the negative form. I'm not going to walk. Number seven, find. I'm going to find. And number eight, remember, uh, remember number eight, this is a question. So when you have a question, most of the times, you have to start with your verb to be okay are you going to try sushi with fish and so the lot do you guys like sushi i don't like sushi i know off track okay off the record i don't like sushi like how do you guys eat that i want my fish fried or steamed or cooked or made of stew i don't want ah okay most strength to you guys if you like sushi Tell me how you do it. You, you eat it with soy sauce and wasabi, right? I can't do it. More strength to you, okay? Number nine, not eat in the negative. I'm not going to eat. So one more time, okay? When you have the verb be going to, it means you have an auxiliary verb, auxiliary verb. It's like the automatic verb that lets you know if it's past tense or future tense. Therefore, you do not conjugate. You don't do anything to the next verb, okay? A good example, we're going to fly. Number one, we're going to fly. You do not say, we're going to fly. We're going to flew. We're going to fled. Okay, different word altogether. We're going to flying. Cannot say that. When you have going to, that means you don't do anything to the next verb All right oh yeah by the way i just realized there's no such thing as flight i'm just giving a wrong example okay yes please there's no such thing as flight i'm giving the wrong example All right okay number three exercise three which means i need you guys to write down the sentences remember we've got our journal symbol here so now please write down in your notebooks or on paper we are going to choose the correct form of the verbs. And then you, you, my lovely students, you have to write down the correct sentence, okay? So number one, next month I dash, no, next month I going to, or I'm going to return your bicycle. I'm gonna have to say, cancel going to. So your answer is next month, I'm going to return your bicycle. Number two, oh guys, remember, do we need to go over this? When you, when you have uh, the verb be going to, you need to use I am, you are, he is, she is, they are, it is. And those are your personal pronouns. So we cannot say I going to, we need I am, you are, he is, she is, okay? But I'm sure you guys remember that. Number two, we are going to, or we going to visit Argentina. I'm gonna go for cancel going to, we are going to, remember, for the verb going to, we need I am, you are, he is, she is, and those are your personal pronouns. So that means number three, they aren't going to, we already have the verb going to, auxiliary verb, so going to cannot be met, met is past tense. We have our auxiliary verbs, don't do anything to the verb. Cancel, met. Number four, I'm going to working. No, remember, I'm going to, don't do anything to the next verb. So I'm gonna go for, I'm going to work in a sports shop. That's my plan. Number five, you're going to come to the UK one day. And number six, they aren't going to join us. So now, please on on your paper or in your notebooks please write down number one to six only the correct sentence okay please write down don't forget ooh, don't forget to write your own nickname and your own student number on your paper or in your notebook otherwise i don't know who is who i know some handwritings but let's be safe this is your score 
So please pause the screen, pause, and write down number one to six, the correct sentences, okay? All right, so what am I gonna eat today? Hmm. I'm just waiting for you guys, okay? But you can pause, pause the screen, okay? I'm gonna play my song just 10 seconds. I need to break. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's continue. I'm going to pause my music. Give me a second, okay? One second. Pause. All right, stop, 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 Shazzy. Again. Again. But she don't succeed. Hey, hey. <laughs> this is why I like pre recording, I can do what I want. <laughs> Oh my God, that was so funny. All right, so exercise four. <laughs> exercise four, once again, you have the, uh, the journal image or symbol, which means I would like you guys to copy down everything. So we need to make sentences with the present continuous, which is um, the uh, personal pronoun and verb ing. We are studying. That's present continuous, or we're going to use be going to auxiliary verb plus verb. Do not conjugate. So please copy again for this exercise. It's the second exercise you are going to copy, all right? So number zero has been done for us. That's the example. It's been done for us. They gave us the words, we visit Turkey one day. And so we uh, made a sentence and we said, we're going to visit Turkey one day. Number one. I'll read the words um, the way they are according to the PowerPoint and then I'll give the answer, okay? Except for my four slash one. You guys are gonna do it properly if we have enough time. So number one, I get the bus at 6.45 p.m. I'm gonna have to go for, I'm getting the bus at 6.45 p.m. Number two, I cycle to your house next time. I'm going to have to go for, I'm going to cycle to your house next time. Number three, they not buy a new TV. That's in the negative. They aren't going to buy a new TV. Number four, we walk home after school today. I'm going to have to say, we're walking home after school today. Or number four, you can also say we're going to walk home after school today, okay? So you just have to make the sentences with either present continuous or be going to. So if you have a, uh, another sentence that you conjugated differently, that's okay, okay? For example, number four, I put down, we're walking home after school today, but you can also say, we're going to walk home after school today. It's correct. I'm just giving us answers to work with. Ah, oh, the braces are painful. Number five, the sky is dark and cloudy. I think it's rain. I'm gonna go for, the sky is dark and cloudy. It's going to rain. Oh, wait, I think, oh, no, 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 no. I should have said, I think it's going to rain. Yeah, okay. All right, so number five, quick, 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 quick fix. The sky is dark and cloudy. You can say, I think it's going to rain. I just said it's going to rain, but okay, it's all right. We'll take the answers. Number six, we not catch the 5.30 train tomorrow. I'm going to go for, we aren't catching the 5.30 train tomorrow. So again, pause, please copy number one up to six in your notebook or on paper, okay? This is the second exercise you are copying and writing down. It's the only way I can know you guys are doing the work because again, I have your books. So please pause and copy, okay? <sighs> Continue well. All right, now we're still on page 48 and I'm still talking and talking and talking. We're gonna do phrasal verbs based on traveling. This is quite simple. Uh, basically, we're just gonna read the sentences and then we'll choose the correct meanings of the phrasal verbs. We are not writing this down. Remember here, we don't see any journal symbols. So we're not gonna write it down, which means I'm just gonna go over it real quick. In other words, we're just gonna look for 
the meanings of the words that are highlighted, I will read the sentence and then I'll read the highlighted word. I'll read the answers and then choose the answer, okay? So you can do it with me if you wanna, or for some of you, I know you're on your phones. I'm gonna read the full sentence and then I'll read the highlighted words, and then I'll read the answers and choose the answer. So number one, we're going away at the weekend. Highlighted words, going away. A, staying at home. B, visiting another place. The answer is B, visiting another place. Maybe it's just me, I'm just sharing my opinion. When it comes to traveling plans or future plans, I never say at the weekend. For me, I always say on the weekend or during the weekend. Is it me only? For example, for me, for me, for me, okay? I would not say we're going away at the weekend. I would say we're going away during the weekend or we're going away uh, over the weekend, we're going away on the weekend. And I've never used we're going away at the weekend. Huh, okay. It's just my opinion, okay? Remember, like I always say, we can always share our opinions. If we think differently or feel differently, we're just sharing an opinion. I never say we're going away at the weekend. I say we're going away over the weekend, we're going away during the weekend, we're going away um, on the weekend, but not at the weekend, but it's in the book, so I guess it's correct. Number two, they set off at 9.30 this morning. Highlighted words or uh, set off, a, left a hotel. B, started a journey. The answer is B, started a journey. Number three, when are you getting back? Highlighted words, getting back. A, arriving in another place. B, returning. The answer is B, returning. Number four, what time did the plane take off? Highlighted words, take off. A, leave, it, leave, it, leave the ground. B, arrive after a flight. I'm going to go for A, leave the ground. Number five, we're going to check in early. Highlighted words, check in. A, arrive at a hotel or for a flight. B, reserve a hotel or a flight. A, number six, see you at four. My flight is getting in at 3.45. Highlighted words, getting in. A, arriving. B, leaving. I'm gonna go for arriving. Seven, I can't wait to look around Moscow. Highlighted words, look around. A, visit a place and look at the things in it. B, feel happy that something is going to happen. I'm going to go for A. So number eight, my dad is going to pick up my mom at the station. Highlighted word, pick up, which means, ta-da, collect. So for this exercise, you're not copying, okay? Let's continue. Now for exercise two, ooh, there we go. Exercise two, you are gonna copy number one to eight. Get those hands ready. Flex, flex, stretch, do it. You're gonna copy number one to eight. I don't, let me bang the table. I don't want to see shorthand, okay? I don't want to see shorthand. Write the full sentence. I'm literally in my camera right now. <laughs> I don't want to see shorthand. Don't write number one, what as W-A-T, no. Don't write time as T-Y-M. Don't write you as you. Please write the full sentences, okay? I love you. So exercise two, please copy everything word for word. Do not use shorthand, okay? There we go. We have our symbol for a journal. For this exercise, we have to complete the questions and we have to use the correct form uh, using exercise one. So the answers for this exercise are here. Going away, set off, getting back, take off, check in, getting in, look around and pick up. Since you guys are gonna copy this, I will just read the sentences, okay? Number one, what time do you set off for school every morning? Number two, who normally, oh yeah, number two, there's something I don't agree with, number two. But according to the book, I, I need to argue about this. According to the teacher's book, number two is, 
who normally picks up you and your friends from school, according to the book. But again, my opinion, I, I don't agree with this. I really don't. I think it should be, I think, I think, I think it should be who normally picks you and your friends up from school. But in the book, again, in the book, in the teacher's book, the answer is who normally picks up you and your friends? <sighs> my opinion, even in my journal, I'll, I'll show you an example of my journal. I said, who normally picks you and your friends up from school? Okay. So number two, I will let you decide. According to the book, the answer is who normally picks up you? and your friends. But according to the English I learned, it should be who normally picks you and your friends up from school. Number three, do you usually go away? Ah, number four, come on. Number three, do you usually go away or stay at home in the holidays? Number four, do you like looking around old places? Five, what time do you get in from school in the afternoon? Six, when did you get back from your most recent holiday? Where did you go to? Number seven, how do you feel when your, how do you feel when your flight takes off and lands? Number eight, can you explain what you have to do when you check into a hotel? So please copy exercise two and write everything, number one up to eight, either in your notebook or on paper, okay? Because there we go, we've got our journal symbol. So pause and write down everything. All right, let's continue. Uh, we're now on page, yay. We're not, oh my gosh, wow, we have a lot of work. Wait, can I, can I quickly check something? I wanna see if I did up to page 51. Because now this is page 50. Let's see. Let's see. I feel like I'm giving you guys too much work. Weesh. Okay, let's see. I might decide to stop. Let's see how it goes. Um, now we're on page 49. So page 49, we basically have to look at the picture. And I'll ask you guys, where do you think this is? I'm going to go with a safe answer and say this is in a cold country. I'll just say this is at least definitely for sure, 100%, no argument. It's not Thailand, okay? Uh, what is the person doing? The person is skiing. Mm -hmm. And where is the person going? I'm going to assume they're about to go down a sloppy hill. Now, we have to complete this uh, travel writing. And so we just have to look at the initial typing here for initial wording and then we have to guess what should go here okay so basically what kind of information is needed for each space we're just guessing number one first prize trip to it's like a competition okay it's a competition for this exercise we're just supposed to um use a bit of critical analysis just look at the initial information and then tell me what you think should go there so number one first prize trip to i would assume name of a place so trip to thailand and then length of trip to period of time maybe two nights two days two weeks okay so that's the exercise we have our initial details or information and then we predict or we analyze what we think should go here number three what you must mention the people dash and the local environment i'm going to go for something of interest when you travel so when you travel you're going to meet new people try new food and see a new local environment maximum number of words to write for the competition that's going to be uh, a number okay so maybe you have to write 400 words explaining why you should go to Tokyo, Japan, why you should be the one that wins. The next one, closing date of competition, 19th. That has to be a month, like 19th of August. The last one, I shouted August because I have a student. I have August in four slash one. What information to include when you apply? I'm going to have to say personal information like your telephone number or social media, how we can contact you and if you win type of thing. So this exercise, 
was just meant for you to look at the initial information that you have, try to analyze and predict what should go here, okay? Uh, so this one, we're not going to write down anything. We don't see our journal symbol. Let's continue. And then for this exercise, it's meant to be a speaking exercise. So we're going to skip it. However, if we were having our class, I would just ask you to read that these are phrases that you use when you are making a suggestion. For example, why didn't you do all your homework before the New Year's? We're just getting ideas on how to share a suggestion. We could go to a cafe for the New Year's, okay? These are just phrases that you can use when you want to make a suggestion. So we're gonna skip this. So page 49, done. Ha, page 50. Oh my gosh, is this too much work? How many minutes is this so far? Let me check my phone. Should we, ah, continue, you can do it. Because remember, I'm trying to make up for last week as well. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. So now the last one, page 50 and page 51. Yeah, because you need to do the exercises. All right, so page 50 and 51. I'll make life easier for you guys. And I will not read this because I've been talking and talking and even my braces are starting to get a little bit painful. So page 50, breathe. <sighs> Take a breath. That's me breathing. <sighs> So page 50, interpersonal skills. Interpersonal skills are just skills that you need. And these skills will help you when it comes to interacting with people. They don't have to be professional skills. Like, oh, I know how to code things or I know how to uh, do engineering. No, interpersonal skills are personal skills. They're about people, okay? So I'm gonna read life skills. And then um, I'm, I'm going to answer exercise one and we continue. So life skills, dealing with conflict. Conflict is about arguments, disagreement, or situations that are not comfortable, okay? That's conflict. Arguments, disagreements, or situations that are not comfortable. We never have, ooh, do I have a British accent? Do I want to try a British accent? Oh, let me try we never have exactly the same ideas or opinions as our friends or family members. We often disagree with people and sometimes we get angry or have arguments. When that happens, we need to <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry I'm your teacher. Like, you know, sometimes I sit down and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry that I'm their teacher. I'm actually sorry. I wanna cry right now. <laughs> That was my British accent, you guys. I want to I wanna cry because sometimes I can't believe I'm your teacher. Like, this is what you guys have as a teacher. <laughs> All right, let me use my normal accent. When that happens, it's talking about disagreements. When that happens, we need to deal with conflicts, disagreements or arguments or situations that are not comfortable in a positive way and work together to solve the problem. Number one, do you get along well with most people? I would like to believe that I do. Question mark, but yeah, or dot, 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 but I think I do. Number two, what things make you feel upset or angry? Hey. Is this a question? Why is this in the book? What makes me upset? Do we have to get into this? Okay, I'll just share my thoughts. Um, what makes me upset or angry is when I feel that... <laughs> okay, no. No, 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 no. Next, I don't want to say what I want to say. No. <laughs> I will keep my opinions to myself. I love you guys. All right, so the next one, um, we're supposed to complete this, but because I feel like I've been teaching, 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 and teaching, we're going to, I'm just going to read number two, okay? So I'll read, I'm reading number two. It's basically a passage about tips on how to fix arguments with your friends. Remember, who did I ask this? Is it neck or... Max glasses. I said, what is define problem and solution? A problem is when something is wrong. A solution, the action to fix a problem. Okay. So one more time, a problem is when something is wrong. A solution is 
the action that fixes a problem, okay? All right, so basically this passage is talking about uh, friends and arguments and tips on how to deal with problems, all right? So we're supposed to complete all of this, but I personally feel like I have been talking and talking and talking and talking. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go straight to exercise. Okay, should we read some of the tips? So uh, you have to listen first, listen to the other person, admit your mistakes, cool down, and then understand that arguments are a normal part of life and we should try to move on, yada, 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 yada. I will read number two only and then we'll move on, okay? Because I don't want to make this too long as well. My God, I've been talking for like 40 minutes, which is basically our lesson. So, okay, let me get into this. Number two, I'm just going to read so that you guys can continue listening to my lovely voice. Should I? Okay, no, I won't do my British accent again. Just reading. Number two, listen. Should I read this one first? Okay. What happens when you and your friends argue? How should you react when they get angry or upset with you? Follow these helpful tips to deal with conflict in your friendships and find a solution that works for everyone. I'll just read number two and we move on, okay? Listen first. Give the other person a chance to speak without interrupting them. You have to listen carefully and pay attention to your friend's face and body language. Try to imagine how your friend is probably feeling at that moment, okay? Unfortunately, because this is an online lesson, let's move on. So now we need to match the sentences similar to ideas in the text. For this exercise, let's skip it, all right? Because um, I thought we had time. I, I lied to myself. I thought we had time and would have to go over this exercise, but we don't have time. So let's skip this, but I will show you my beautiful answers, okay? So let's skip this exercise because for us to do this exercise, we have to have read everything from the reading passage, all right? All right, yay, more work, more work, which means you guys need to write this down. Please write down everything, number one to six. We have to look at the highlighted words in the reading passage, and the, uh, the highlighted words are scream, interrupting, body language, admit, solve, disagreement. Please copy everything, okay? Please copy number one, copy this sentence, and then you write the, um, the term. So this, these are the definitions, and we'll write the terms. Number one, say that something is true or real. I'm going to have to go with, why can't I say the answer? Admit, okay. To say that something is true or real, you have to admit it. I think this is true. Number two, stopping someone who is speaking, interrupting. Number three, find the answer to something or stop a problem. Solve. Solve is the synonym for solution. Number four, when people have a different opinion about something, disagreement. Number five, shout something very loudly in a high voice, scream. Number six, obviously that's gonna be body language. So please copy number one to six as it is. Copy one, say that something is true or real, admit. Copy exactly the way it is, okay? There we go, you have to copy this. So pause and we'll continue. I'm just gonna sit on my juice. Okie dokie. Oh, all right. Next. Whew. So this is a discussion. I'll probably have it with my four slash six. I, I'm going to skip this, man. <laughs> I'm not prepared to answer this exercise. So let's skip it. I'll just read the questions. I will read the questions. Number one, when was the last argument you had with a friend question mark what did you argue about question mark number two how did you deal with the conflict or how do you deal with the disagreement did you use any tips from the article okay so for this one i'm just going to read the questions i will not answer i don't think anyone should answer i feel like even if we were in class i would not ask you guys to answer no 
then exercise six and seven will skip because it's a listening exercise and i honestly feel like i've been talking forever yay it's the last one yes because i've been talking for like an entire 50 minutes or something okay so this is easy peasy again you're going to write this down so complete the useful language box using the uh, no you <laughs> complete the useful language phrases with the words in the box. The words in the box are about, always, fault, idea, tired, why. If I have my four slash one, I think tomorrow I'll ask someone to read. Mulan, maybe I'll ask you to read. About, please pronounce the T, about, always, pronounce the S, fault, pronounce the T, idea, tired, why. Number one, you've dash got an excuse. You've always got an excuse. Number two, I'm getting dash of this. I'm getting tired of this. Why are you so angry? I'm sorry about that. It wasn't my fault. I've got an idea. Please copy these sentences, okay? There we go. Oh, yes. So once again, let's go over this real quick. It's getting hot in here. AC on. There we go, mama. So once again, uh, let's go over our scores because now I really have to keep up with you guys and I'll share with you how you're getting your scores, ETC, ETC. We've done one test, four slash six, four slash one, next week, Thursday, online or in person. We'll see. Video summaries, we did that. The one about Devin. Um, and we talked about Down syndrome and the vocabulary. Workbook and worksheets, two points, done. I have your books. Pop quiz, next week. Reflective journal, that's the one you're doing right now. And then group presentations, we're gonna see if we can do that or if we're still doing online, then you guys will have to do speaking. We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. So four slash six, you have one more test, one pop quiz for next week online and group presentation. Next week, first week of January, we're gonna do the pop quiz. Second week of January, we'll have the test. Third week of January, we'll have our presentations. Oh, we'll definitely be at school. And then fourth week, we'll have midterm. So we are on schedule. Next week, online, pop quiz. Second week of January, test. Third week of January, presentations or speaking. Fourth week of January, midterms, ta-da! So please make sure that for your reflective journal, you have five exercises that you would have written, and this is what it should look like. Please don't forget to write your nickname and your student ID, okay? So these are the exercises that we have done. Take a picture, upload it in your Google Classroom, okay? Five points, this is the five points. Go back. This is a five points. This is what we're doing this week, okay? All right, thank you guys. Woo, I need a break. Oh, thank you guys. Have a lovely new year. So, oh yes, all the work is due on 4 January using Google Classroom. In other words, please do your work like this. Take a picture, upload it, use, upload it, upload it using Google Classroom by the 4th of January, because 4th of January, I will share a new PowerPoint with your homework, okay? So happy new year, 2021! I know some of you, like Poopa right now, I know you are shaking your head because I did that little scream singing thing, I know. All right, so happy new year, you guys. Happy 2021. I wish you, okay, seriously, serious. Um, I wish you guys good year next year. I wish um, that you will get good grades and I hope you have strength to go through even the bad days. I hope you guys will be happy and you will take care of your mind and your health and your emotions and for some of you i wish for you to get good boyfriends and good girlfriends and so you guys take care i love you lots we love you lots like all the teachers love you and take care of you the right way so see you guys very soon and do your work okay bye guys take care 
stop. Can I play my music? Yay. Hey. And try again, try again. Mm -hmm. hey, hey. 